Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm showing you how to do a kettlebell snatch. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today I'm gonna be taking you through step-by-step step how to scale to a full kettlebell snatch. And this is gonna be so we're not banging up the forearms or destroying your shoulder in the process or low back or hurting yourself in any way, shape, or form as you're doing that kettlebell snatch. So we're gonna make sure you have nice solid structure and form in a hard style format of the kettlebell snatch. And that will be our main goal overall. So first of all, why would I wanna be using a kettlebell snatch? When would I wanna be using a kettlebell snatch? So the kettlebell snatch is a combination of a bit of a hinge movement and almost a pressing movement in the vertical plane. So you can think of it as a combination of a hinge plus a vertical press in some way, shape, and form. And you'll see that as we're talking through the actual movement process here that you wanna have down as you're doing that kettlebell snatch. Now, one thing we wanna to check to make sure that you're in a good position to actually do a kettlebell snatch safely is your overhead mobility. So the first thing we would wanna make sure is that you could comfortably extend the arm overhead and even slightly behind in line with the ear or slightly to the back of it there. So I should be able to easily straighten that arm up overhead and have good alignment where it is sitting in line with my ear or slightly behind that with the shoulder blade nicely set, uh, stacked on my shoulder and upper back there. So it's not anything funny like that at the shoulder. Those are kind of the prerequisites, just basic good overhead mobility that you have that range of motion. If not, you need to work on your overhead mobility first and really open that up so that this can be a safe movement for you and you're not gonna injure yourself as you're trying to perform it. Other than that, there are a few steps we're gonna look at, a few pieces. So we're gonna talk about the swing itself. We're gonna talk about a high pull portion and then we're gonna talk about the punch and then the drop, the return there. So how to control it safely. Those are the key pieces that we're gonna to put together to make your full kettlebell snatch. Now, ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this and we'll look at all those pieces in their full. All right, the first piece of our snatch that we need to have down is a good kettlebell single arm swing here. What I'm doing is leaning over the bell, putting all my weight down onto it at first so I could set my shoulder. Once I have that, I'm gonna pull the bell high up into my hip crease and drive the hips forward to explosively swing the bell up to about chest and head height. Now you'll notice that my thumb points back when it's between high in that triangle of the hips above the knees, and I'm pulling the bell back into the hip crease each time, driving forward, practicing the swing of my free arm with that bell so that I'm able to lock in my core at the top. So I wanna feel a tight plank position at the top. Once again, I'm gonna reset here, set the shoulder on the bell first, get a good grip, make sure I'm doing a good job setting that position, pulling the bell back, and then driving forward with the hips, explosively swinging it up, letting it float at about chest to head height, and then pulling it back down high in the hip crease where our triangle target is above the knees, below the hips there. The next piece we're gonna add is a high pull. So we're doing a single arm swing, but this time I'm gonna pull the bell back into a 90 degree position at the elbow so that my shoulder is stabilizing and meeting it. So I want to pull high, the bell's floating, and I'm stopping the bell in that 90 degree position as it floats back. Then I push it back down and pull it back into my hip crease with my thumb pointing back. So I'm controlling that swing and controlling the bell in each piece of it. Even though it's floating, I'm kind of meeting it with a solid core and a strong shoulder in that top position as I pull high and it floats for that split second up high by my forehead.
Once you've got the high pull down, now we can go for that full snatch, adding the punch. So here, when I get to that floating position again with the high pull, I'm gonna punch through the handle and lock in solidifying so that my shoulder is sucked into my upper back, my core is tight, glutes engaged, quads engaged, abs engaged, and the punch, you wanna note, has a rotation to it. So if you watch my forearm, even though I do a high pull there, I'm also rotating slightly around the bell so that it's not flipping over my hand and wrist and completely slamming my forearm in this position. So there's a slight rotation to the bell and I'm working around it. It happens quickly and you have to move fast on it, but that rotation is what will keep the bell from banging up your forearms on your snatch. If there's no rotation, if it's just flipping over the top, you're gonna feel like it's hitting you hard every time you come around. And you can watch the forearm rotation, especially on the down portion. As I come back down, you'll see the bell slightly rotate around my forearm as my thumb starts to point back toward my pelvis there when I'm bringing it down. And the last piece we're going to work on is the rotation on the drop bringing it back into that high target of the hips once again. So we control the drop by rotating the bell back around the forearm and then pulling with the thumb pointing back to that target. You can watch right from this front view how the bell is always above the knees and in my hip crease with the forearm so that I'm keeping it high up close to my body and pulling it down actively into that target every time. If you're having trouble with this rotation on either the punch or the rotation down, what I'm gonna do is put a video here linked to a kettlebell clean in which I explain very clearly how to do that rotation uh, in a much better way. So I'll add that video here so you guys can work on your rotation a little bit more and that will help you clean up the snatch as well as your clean if you're doing that so that you're not banging up your forearms in the process in more detail. All right, and there you have it. How to perform a kettlebell snatch and how to scale yourself up to it, making sure that you have, first of all, the range of motion that you should, and secondly, the actual steps of the movement down. You can practice each piece individually and build it up from there to that full snatch. Once you have it, Put it in on that hinge day, put it in as a vertical press day, work it in in that way in your training, and overall, enjoy it, start to crush it. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below, and take a moment to share this one with a friend. If they're working with kettlebells and they want to start progressing to something like the snatch movement, send it their way, or maybe they're already doing some snatch, but they could refine and polish their uh, form a little bit. Go ahead, show them some, some love. If you are somebody who struggles with training aches and injuries that are holding you back from actually being able to perform at the intensity you like to, or you're limited in that overhead mobility and you just want to be able to perform an exercise like the kettlebell snatch and overall reach overhead to get a cup out of the cupboard, then what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description to fill out a coaching application and schedule a mobility blueprint call. This is your opportunity to get on a Zoom call with me so we can put you through a quick assessment. I can gather all the information I need to tailor a program specific to your needs, and then I'll also lay out the full details of what that programming would look like, including the duration of the program, number of sessions, equipment you need access to, and how I'd be coaching you through that process, and other details around pricing and how I can help you out in that way. So if that's something you are interested in, drop down below, fill out that application, schedule a call, and we'll start moving you in that direction. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it doesn't get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.